Counter UAS with COTS, capturing remote ID from uncrewed vehicles using commercial off-the-shelf components. Hey everyone, my name is Greg Albrecht, W2GMD. I'm a public safety technologist and EMT. Uh, you can find my website at www.ampledata.org. So a quick overview of what we're going to present, uh, background on the problem, uh, remote ID, demonstration of the capability, conclusions from our demonstration, and future considerations. Here's some background in numbers. This graph is showing the percentage of English books in Google's corpus with phrases related to drones and UAVs. And the thing that stands out here is since 2018, there has been an exponential growth in usage of phrases related to drones in the corpus of English books. It's a pretty significant increase. And if we look across the board, at the background in words, we can see that drones and drone incursions are becoming an increasing problem, both for public safety and defense. The other conflict here is that because drones are growing in popularity, there's a need to deconflict the airspace so that drone operators of many different types can share the airspace with other uncrewed and crewed aircraft safely. So the solution the FAA and industry have come up with is Remote ID, which you can think of as ADSB for drones. ADSB being the system for crewed aircraft that allows them to transmit their position and vector information in real time to other aircraft as well as ground stations. The FAA has mandated Remote ID for certain uncrewed aircraft and it is based on Open Drone ID, which is available at opendroneid.org. This is an open standard that anyone can implement and use. The Open Drone ID data contains things like flight registry, flight telemetry, vector information, position information, operator location information. And it can use many different waveforms. It can use Wi-Fi 2.4, Wi-Fi 5.8, BLE, Bluetooth 4, Bluetooth 5, and so on. And FAA's definition is that remote ID is the ability of a drone in flight to provide identification and location information that can be received by other parties through a broadcast signal. So what we're going to demonstrate is the use of commercial off-the-shelf components to capture and analyze remote ID emitters. And that's going to look something like this. Uh, a remote ID uh, device is going to transmit its remote ID packets. We're going to capture and intercept these packets using a device running OpenWRT, OpenWRT. Uh, we're going to pipe that through to a computer where we can use Wireshark to analyze that data. Uh, the device we're going to be using, our device under test, is a Ubiquiti Air Max Bullet M2. Uh, this is a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi radio, uh, single chain Wi-Fi radio. Uh, it uses the Atheros Wi-Fi chipset, and they're about $80 new. You can get them used uh, for, for less. But more importantly, the chipset that this device uses for Wi-Fi is based on the Atheros AR9 Wi-Fi chipset, which supports monitor mode. Monitor mode is a mode that allows Wi-Fi chipsets to capture all wireless traffic. Uh, this is different from promiscuous mode, which you might be familiar with. Um, and it's only supported on some open source Wi-Fi chipset drivers. Uh, luckily, the folks at Wireshark have put together a good guide on determining which chipsets and which drivers support monitor mode. But the baseline is monitor mode allows your Wi-Fi radio to capture and analyze all Wi-Fi packets, regardless of whether they're destined for that Wi-Fi radio or other Wi-Fi radios. And that's the capability we're going to use to intercept remote ID. Uh, on the device, what's going to allow us to put it into this mode is the OpenWRT firmware. Uh, it's a Linux-based op operating system for embedded systems. It has a vast array of hardware and device support. Uh, it's free and open source, and more importantly, it runs on our device under test. And you can find out more about OpenWRT as well as the process for installing OpenWRT at openwrt.org, openwrt.org. And we're going to use Wireshark to analyze the data. Uh, Wireshark is a free and open source packet analyzer. 
Uh, it's cross-platform. It runs on Windows and Linux and all sorts of other operating systems. And it can capture and analyze both wired and wireless LAN packets, which is a capability we're going to use. Uh, the device setup, the test setup for a device under test. We're going to use Ubiquiti Bullet M2. Uh, this particular setup was configured to be mobile. So we used USB-C power distribution to power the rocket and a omnidirectional Wi-Fi antenna to capture the Wi-Fi signals. Our transmitter, the thing that's going to be emitting our remote ID packets, is an ESP8266 microcontroller running a special remote ID simulation firmware. Uh, this also is a portable setup, so this is powered by a USB battery. This is not too dissimilar from the emitter that you might attach after market to a drone that was not originally sold with remote ID capability. Uh, they come in various shapes and sizes, and a lot of them are based on this type of microcontroller. And then for our uh, analyzing, where we're going to analyze our data is our computer workstation. Uh, and on there, we're going to run the Wireshark software along with the Wireshark Remote ID Dissector, which is a, uh, an add-on plugin for Wireshark that allows it to decode and display remote ID packets. So our steps. Uh, the TLDR is we're going to use SSH to pipe TCP dump from our device under test to our workstation uh, with Wireshark. Uh, so our steps are we're going to install OpenWort on our device under test. We're going to install Wireshark on our computer workstation. And we're going to execute the command to pull in the Wi-Fi packets from our device under test and pass them to our computer workstation. Uh, there's a complete technical guide and setup guide on the web at ampledata.org slash cuas underscore cots dot html. So this is what a remote ID emitter looks like using the tool Wi-Fi Explorer. Uh, or this is what they can look like. Uh, you'll see a, a oddly named SSID typically on channel 6 with 20 megahertz of bandwidth uh, and either WEP or no um, protection. So this one in particular is how it shows up in Wi-Fi Explorer on my computer when using Wi-Fi for remote ID. And this is what a remote ID packet looks like in Wireshark. Uh, we decode it as open drone ID and you can see a couple frames coming through with that. And then once we've decoded it, we can actually look at the packet details in Wireshark get things like the operator location, the operator latitude, and other telemetry. We're not alone with using Wireshark. We can also use T-Shark on the command line to capture and analyze data. Here's a full output of the remote execution command that allows us to get into the device under test and uh, pipe and decode open drone ID packets over our network connection. We can also output the packets as JSON from T-Shark. And where that comes in handy is if we want to pipe this out to something like Node-RED. So this is what a remote ID packet would look like in Node-RED. So conclusions. Remote ID can be captured and analyzed using commercial off-the-shelf components. A Ubiquiti Bullet M2 can act as a remote ID capture node for remote ID. And it, overall, using this approach would lower the barrier to entry for an affordable counter UAS detection and tracking system using commercial off-the-shelf components. Future considerations extend this test to waveforms other than 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, build a distributed counter UAS detector using commercial off-the-shelf. For example, distribute these receivers all over the place so you have diversity of coverage. Uh, integrations with situational awareness applications like ATAC. Uh, and then combining it with other sensors, for example, combining remote ID with an ADSB sensor. Well, I appreciate you watching this presentation. Uh, I encourage you to go to the blog post to get a deeper dive on the technical implementation of this. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.